Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's Kush back at again with another New York Giants video. In today's vid, we're going to talk a little bit about something that I've said a lot on streams but have yet to actually make a video about it and talk just a little bit more in depth. Get your guys' thoughts directly through the comments and all that and that is the Giants defensive line. I've said several times, you know, I'm pretty sure a lot of you have heard me express his opinion before that the Giants defensive line actually got better in the offseason despite the massive loss of Dalvin Thompson to the Minnesota Vikings as we've always lost a defensive lineman to the Minnesota Vikings um although real quick kind of semantics here I don't know if you could like classify it as a loss we let him go so it's a loss for the team but it's not like Minnesota beat us out on a contract or anything it's just that we let him go and we signed in terms of trying to replace his run production we re-signed Austin Johnson we signed Danny Shelton two guys known for their tackle for loss ability and stuffing the run up the middle and we also have BJ Hill still on the roster a third round pick from 2018 who was a good enough type of player um you know showed a really big flash in his rookie year uh, currently is the rookie sack holder uh, for the Giants, he holds that record unofficially. It's LT, but that wasn't really counted back then um, because they weren't actually counting sacks. So that five and a half sacks of 2018 is the rookie Giants sack record with BJ Hill. And then, of course, we also went out and signed a guy in Afidi Odenigbo to, you know, kind of replace that pass rushing ability of Dalvin Thompson. And he's from the Vikings. I sometimes, you know, joke and say we traded Dalvin for Rafidi and we'll see how that works out. But I think that the Giants legitimately got better on the defensive line um, as opposed to getting worse because of the loss of Dalvin, right? So let's kind of talk about that for a second. The value of Dalvin Thompson. Dalvin Thompson and what he did for his team isn't necessarily shown in the stats, right? And I made a whole video about this like a week before he got uh, the Giants let him walk. It was the very first, no, it was the second we need to talk episode, I, talk, I think where many of the things that Dalvin does can't really be tracked on a stat sheet. And we'll, we'll get to his actual stats in a second, but first of all, his uh, presence up the middle, right? Dalvin took a lot of double teams for the Giants in his past couple of years with us. There were teams paying attention to him and realizing that if they didn't, this man is actually gonna blow up the middle and get a sack. He was very, very good with getting pressure up the middle and teams had to pay attention to him for that and I mean Dalvin almost always played strictly at that nose tackle position um, I'm sure he definitely was moved out to the ends uh, once or twice by Patrick Graham and even by James Betcher but because of the fact that teams were paying attention to him and um, they, they only could double team one person at a time and we already know that teams also double team Leonard Williams Essentially, it became a thing where, where if Dalvin was being double teamed, Leonard was not and Leonard was getting there and he was getting the sack. Or if Dalvin was double teamed and Leonard was not, then you know, one of our edge rushers is getting there. Or if Leonard is being double teamed, but for some reason they let Dalvin, you know, not get double teamed, he's going to get a quarterback pressure, a quarterback hit, or even luckily enough, a sack. It was always a thing like that with our defensive line where they were paying attention to one of our guys at all times or God forbid they double team both of the guys in the middle there and then oops that's an automatic sack for dexter lawrence or for another one of the edge rushers and once again it's not something that's necessarily tracked in the stats but it could be reflected in the stats when you look at dalvin's last two years it was his best two years as you know a nfl player in terms of a pass rusher you know both of the years he uh tallied three and a half sacks and he had 10 quarterback hits and then nine quarterback hits respectively 2019 2020 in the past two years but of course, the one thing he's most known for is his run stuffing ability, and that's where you're going to look at the tackles and tackles for loss. Both years in the past two years, 49 uh, total tackles each with eight tackles for loss in 2020 and seven in 2019. Danny Shelton is going to be, I think, the major immediate replacement in terms of who we signed this offseason for Dalvin Thompson, specifically for run stuffing. He is somebody that in 2019 had his best year with 61 tackles two for loss with the New England Patriots, which I don't think is a coincidence because Judge was still with New England at the time. And uh, I think maybe he's trying to get Danny to have a similar performance as he did, as he did there, which isn't um, exactly 
a reach for Judge. I mean, if he believes Patrick Graham is that guy to uh, bring this out of Danny Shelton, and Patrick Graham is obviously a great defensive coordinator, and also Shelton will be having a lot of help around him, uh, then why not? Why can't he repeat? Even if he can't, it might be a rotation of Shelton and Johnson, a guy that was on the defense last year and who was essentially the backup to Dalvin Thompson, who still did really well. Last year, he had 18 total tackles with two for loss. And whenever he was in there, there wasn't really much of a change in the run defense. I mean, once again, guys, the Giants ranked as a top 10 defense against the run in 2020. And then, of course, there's B.J. Hill as well. There's going to be a great rotation here. And that don't even forget Dexter Lawrence. I personally want Dexter to stay at the defensive end position, not necessarily in the middle. Um, but he just might be shifted over to the middle because of his size. Um, that's always a possibility. I think he has, like, as crazy as it sounds, the way he moves at his size is why I want him to stay at the end position because I think he could be, like, a legitimate inside pass rusher for us, him and Leonard Williams. I think that could be a good duo. But in speaking of pass rush, this is definitely where we got better, and I think there's no question about it because of the guy that we signed from Minnesota in Afidi Odenigbo. Last year, he had three and a half sacks, but the year before, he had seven sacks. So ten and a half sacks combined in the past two years as a part-time pass rusher, you know, as a rotational guy. And even though his sack numbers weren't the same as the year before, his quarterback hits were more. He had 15 quarterback hits last year with 13 in the year before. What does that tell you? He's always getting into the backfield. He's a constant presence in a backfield, which means he's consistent as a rusher with providing pressure. It's just a matter of getting there in time. Kind of reminds me of Leonard Williams in 2019 a little bit where he was consistently getting pressure, but he was just not getting there for the sack. So, I mean, this guy... He's going to be in the same role, essentially, and he could play both in the dirt, which means he could play both as a defensive tackle and he could play standing up. That brings great versatility to the team as well. I think we got better pass rushing wise. The only thing we're worrying about the last of Dalvin Thompson will be the run stuffing ability. And I do think we can match it with a combination of Danny Shelton and Austin Johnson. And then we still have guys behind them. And in addition to all of that. All these players are going to be in an even better defense than what last year's defense was. That's because we improved by adding even more players and adding good players. We have now Aziz Ojolari, who we hope to develop to be that number one edge rusher, who I think he can be. And it's essentially going to be Aziz and uh, Lorenzo as your one and two on the edge. That was a better option than last year with Lorenzo and O'Shane. And even that didn't last long. Our options essentially became Carl Coughlin and Cam Brown because of injuries. So just by default this year, the options at the edge is better. I think that at the defensive line, pass structure lines were better. I think we're gonna match the run stuffing. I think at linebacker, we got better because of the fact that there couldn't be somebody next to Blake right now, whether it's Reggie Raglan or Tay Crowder. And in the secondary, of course, we got better because we added a number one corner to be our number two. So to help around them, like we always say it, right, with football, if you improve one part of the defense or the offense in some way, shape, or form, it's going to help every other part. Well, we improved essentially every level of this defense in the offseason, so it's going to get better. But that's just my opinion. I do think the defensive line got better. I do think the last of Dalvin Thompson was like more than handled. I think the Giants did a great job of essentially replacing his production and even, you know, upping it in some areas. But you guys let me know what you think. Put your thoughts down below. That's it for now, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.